Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We are here for the Stad 11 show versus Switzerland. The cup final, as we'll call it. I'm joined by Eddie and his son, Sean, and Joe from Irish Abroad. And uh, yeah, a starting 11, and I think we set off with goalkeeper, Darren Randolph, mm. Mr. Reliable. What are your thoughts on Darren Randolph, Sean? Um, an absolutely brilliant keeper, going back to... I think it was the second game versus Gibraltar. Made an amazing save, a diving save. Brilliant save. Yeah. 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 And he, 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 start, made, he? he made another good save against uh, was it uh, Denmark as well? Or yeah. Switzerland. Oh, he made a huge one against Polson against uh, Denmark. A huge save, which uh, that, he had to score. That would have been 2-1, definitely. Uh, brilliant save. He made another good one against Georgia as well. And I just think he's since he's got the jersey, yeah. he's been very, very reliable. He's not really made... Any mistakes, and if you'd be, you know, clutching at straws, really to try and find a mistake yeah. that he's I made. I think Sean even said to me when we were watching the games, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't think that he's going to concede a goal, mm -hmm. and if if your kids think that, and if, if you think that, and your centre halves think that, then that basis of of confidence is there through the through the back four, and whoever's looking at it goes, yeah, he's definitely the the number one. At the minute, so he, he has to start. There's no doubt. Yeah, and he's in the, he's in the best probably form of his life. Well, I know last season was a lot better for himself personally, but he's he's been brilliant since he's been to Middlesbrough. I think he's gone up a level. Would you say? Yeah, I mean he was he was the championship. Uh, sorry, he was the goalkeeper in the championship team of the season last year. He seems to have continued his form on. I know Middlesbrough aren't in doing great this season, um, but. It's, the, all the fans seem to say like it would be a whole lot worse if we didn't have Randolph and goals. Um, I know we've got some really good keepers coming through. You know, Keller uh, has made his his first appearance for for Liverpool. Travers is you know is still in the first team picture at Bournemouth, although he hasn't played in the Premier League yet this season. Um, so and you know, uh, Bazunu is like he's the backup keeper uh, for the for the under twenty one. So. But we're still gonna. I think we're gonna have to wait another maybe two or three years before we see them challenging for Randolph for the for the the Ireland uh, jersey. Um, and for me, he starts every game, every definitely every competitive game. Mm -hmm. You know, if he's fit and available. Yeah, I think Travers, unless he starts actually starting uh, regularly for Bournemouth, then I don't think he's really in contention to be taking the jersey off Darren. And I don't think anybody really is. I mean, even Kieran Westwood. Yeah. So uh, yeah, brings me then to uh, right back and. Um, I'll let one of you start off with who you yeah, would look, have there. Look, it's uh, Seamus Coleman is the team captain. He's faced. Um, he has experience, uh, or you know, he's he's experienced at this level. Um, he's he's been playing well for Everton. I haven't really seen him bring that form to Ireland in the qualifiers so far, but nobody's going to challenge him for that uh, starting right back role. Not even Matt Darty. Yeah, what do you think, Sean? Uh. In versus Georgia, I thought he was good uh, going up the wing. Yeah, he's good for Everton as yeah, well. Not much as yeah. much of the day, and he thinks he's he thinks he's good. But yeah. I think for his not only is on the is on the field, what he brings as a as a as an actual football player, he is probably the leader of that side. Um, people speak about um, his his commitment, and I think for Irish football teams, we have to have that. The thing that Whelan brings as well, you know, regardless of their their ability, the absolute desire. Same with Robbie Keane, Niall Quinn. Yeah. That absolute desire to come and play for Ireland in the first place, regardless of maybe form, personal issues, carrying a little niggle, um, and when you're there, it's such an honour to 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 play for the team. And when I look at Coleman in particular, I see someone who embodies. That and for what he can bring for the team as well, there's no, there's no doubt he starts every. Yeah, starts every I think he embodies everything that you want from an Irish player, and you know, he's the type of person that kids look up to. He's a the perfect role model. You never see him in trouble, you know, and he always, he always plays well for Ireland. He's never let us down. I can't think of one moment where he's ever been at fault for a goal for Ireland. I told you what that doesn't happen now, but, uh, you know, the other night against George, it was the first time I've ever really seen him go forward and actually get tackled by yeah. players. It's never, it never really happens to him. Um, gets gets a harsh time at off Everton fans. I know that personally from seeing stuff online and stuff like that. And half of it's unwarranted in my opinion, but for Ireland, he hasn't let us down. And for me, 
captain and right back. That brings me then to left back, and I I, bet I, I ask you guys the question: This um, does Enda Stevens come back in for Matt Doherty, or does Matt Doherty get another bite of the cherry? For me, um, I feel sorry for Matt Doherty in in a way. In the there's no doubt he's a hugely talented footballer. Um, he probably had a couple of personal issues with, with Martin O'Neill beforehand, um, and maybe Doherty saying, "Listen." I'm good enough to play. I'm playing regularly for Wolves. He's not going to dislodge Coleman. I don't think any manager is going to come in unless Coleman has a serious dip, a serious, serious wobble, mm. and, and take him out of the side. I feel sorry for him in that I'd love to see him playing the role that he does for Wolves, but like we said, sometimes your club form doesn't transfer over into your country form. Different team, different setup. Um, different pitch. Different pitch, different places, different different awareness of what the other players know about you um, I think Stevens is very dependable having a left foot does does give you that balance I don't care what anyone says um, I know the last few games we were watching with Sean yeah. he said that McLean and him worked well together so yeah. if, if a young fella sees that they're working together funny enough I thought McLean and Doherty was a good few times maybe three or four in the first half where they were both looking at each other going where are you, you, know, yeah. where are you going to get there? Sometimes they, they were caught ahead of the ball. Were caught, ahead of the ball yeah. caught behind the ball. McLean was snapping at him to come back. Um, so for the role he's played so far, how well he's playing for 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 Sheffield, I would say that Stevens will. For me. Okay, and sorry to cut you off, Heidi, but are we going with a back four or are we going no. with a three? No, we're going with a back four. four. Yeah. Uh, back four because yeah. it's, I think a back three with maybe Derek Williams, Stuffy Egan, and you got two wing backs. Then that might be something to look at. Maybe I don't know, but. Uh, we're going with, with back four. You've yeah, decided. Yeah, I think. I think it's three on one there. So <laughs> that's decided. I think if we were going to uh, ever see a back three, you'd be in a in a friendly. There's no way yeah. we're going to change from a back four to a back three in a qualifier away from home. Yeah. Mm. No. Now it's just the fact that you know Duffy was playing in a back three with Wright and Egan and uh, Williams uh, is left sided, so he could have filled in on that side. That's the only reason I kind of. And he came on late, obviously, and they went to a back three. They finished mm. the game with a back three, which I thought was a bit odd. But anyway. Um, I suppose it's Enda Stevens then, and just for the um, points you brought up there, Eddie, which I thought were all valid, I think Enda Stevens, you go back to familiarity as well, and the, the fact that Kyo's not there, and then you have the three of the back four, which we only thought we were going to have one of the back four originally playing against Georgia, but we had we ended up having uh, two, which was Duffy and Coleman, and obviously Randolph was there too. Um, to bring that familiarity, but Duff, uh, Egan came in, looked like slot in seamlessly as well, which then brings me kind of from left back then to centre back, and I don't think you can look past Duffy and Egan. The performance alone the other night, were, I know it was Georgia, but they were, you know, you would have worried if they weren't there, and the fact that Egan slotted in so comfortably, where Richard Kyo has been so solid for us, regardless of what people think of whatever he did and whatever else, you know, and I'm not going down or anything like that, but everyone does make mistakes and. So on, but doesn't mean now Egan has has a chance to really cement a spot now, and he could be in that team for the next five years or, or six okay. years as a solid player. Because you go back to you know Richard Kell was what age thirty three, yeah. yeah. So um, you know Egan's I think twenty seven, so he's got many years of international football, and he just hasn't been given a chance. He had injuries on top of that. Then he signed for Sheffield United, and since he signed for Sheffield United. It's all gone really well from him. Delight from him. I know him on a personal level. Really nice lad, and uh, he's a leader as well. You know, and yeah, you, you, you know, we look at our team and we don't have that many you know, leaders. And, and and he has a bit about him as well, doesn't he? He's he's um he well able to to mix it if he has to do. It. And I think where Duffy's other benefit there is, if I was playing centre half and you had a fella like Duffy beside you who you're confident and you think of the McGrath and the Bab partnership in 94 where you're thinking yeah McGrath is going to win everything in the air he's going to get the nick into everything and, and Bab then would clean up around it I think for Egan it must be brilliant to have Duffy beside him in the centre defence literally leading it and for Egan then to be able to think okay Avenda Stevens who's a, um, a, a an accomplished player of Randolph who's we all agree brilliant. it's brilliant and in, probably in the form of his life Duffy playing for Ireland mm. well Egan ultimately as well it's probably in the, the form of his in, life in the too. form of his life so you've confident players 
playing well at club, playing playing well for their country, and defensively, yeah, it's all about the unit. So I, I we're nailing down two places for me. Mm-hmm. I think Sean the great Duffy plays, doesn't he? Yeah. I think Duffy, that, Duffy's brilliant. Yeah, I think that, and and they complement each other well, which is good because we we didn't we. We always wanted to see them play. We never really got a chance to actually see them play. And the fact that they've played together mm-hmm. now, I think that that ultimately picks the, the back four. Do you want to add anything on that, Joe? No, no, you've covered everything there. Look, uh, Duffy is inexperienced at this level. He's a goal threat from set, place, set pieces um, in the other end of the pitch. Uh, Egan looks to be that, that ball-playing centre center, uh, defender that we haven't had for a while and we've always wanted to. He stepped up to international level um, without missing a beat, um, and yeah, I look, uh, I look forward to seeing this partnership develop, and um, in the future. Yeah, then uh, on to midfield then, because we've did pretty much I think back four, back five, whatever way you want to look at it, picks itself. Mm. Uh, I mm. including Randolph in that back five, mm. by the way. Uh, then midfield, and this is where it kind of gets tricky. I think. I think you, you can't really take out Hendrick and Howard and regardless of the performance against Georgia, there's no really you, you know, last week they were they were arguably the two best players for their team in the Premier League fixture. You can't you don't just become shit over no and I'm not saying that they are shit, but people are saying as if they were shit. Howard was brilliant against Norwich. Um he dictated everything, he was pretty much involved in every single one of their goals and scored one as well. I, I think maybe on a better surface like the one we have now. I think. I think. Think that Howard will have a better game. They'd be going into it now in the cup final. Mm. I do think Kendrick is due a really big performance. I don't think he's been that bad under Mickey either. I think some of the games he's kind of fallen victim of a sc- scapegoat. That you know, a lot of the times, I, I get the other night against Georgia, the the ball wasn't really sticking with him, but the f- surface did look awful in there, and it wasn't sticking too much with their players either in midfield, and. Um, yeah, I just think I think with Hendrick sometimes there's the feeling that there's a little bit more there, him, yeah. and you know you've no doubt that he can do it. You've no doubt that he's all the talent, range of passing. He's got a great shot on him um, when he yeah. when he gets into the chances. Just you know, he's 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 an established player now. I can't, I'm not sure how many caps he has. Close enough. He's fifty. He's fifty. 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 The, the last, not the Georgia game, but the last game, yeah, yeah. I think it was Switzerland. So that's serious international. He's got two two tournaments, is it, under his, mm. under his, under his belt? 100 Premier League games. 100 Premier League games. games. He's playing regularly in big stadiums and big things. You'd just like to see him maybe grab it a bit more. For Horan, he's a great player. I think McCarthy really rates him. The fact that he gave him minutes against um, Bulgaria, Bulgaria yeah, trust but him, fullback, yeah. he really wanted to say to him, Listen, you're vital to me, and I, I thought that was an incredible statement by McCarthy to to just try and get him the minutes. Mm. Well, how are you actually really appreciate because I asked him that in the press conference. I asked him, I said, uh, do you, do you, was it nice that you actually have a manager who's willing to put give you minutes, albeit it was out of position, but the fact that giving you that minutes has made you probably get back into the team at club level. It and it also means that he's a, he's for me. Mick thinks he's an automatic. Starter. So mm-hmm. again, in terms of nailing down eleven, if you're going to give your midfielder time at left back to get him minutes into the game coming up to this, then he has to, he has to play. So yeah. there's no doubt he starts either. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Yeah, I think as well, uh, Horan's uh, is uh, an option from set pieces as well. Mm-hmm. Like from maybe not from corners, but definitely from from free kicks. Um, yeah, he seems to score a lot of them for Aston Villa, and he's he scored a lot of them across his career. And obviously, you know, the winner against Georgia in the Viva Stadium was a, was a, was a free kick. Um, I'm not really sure if anyone else in the in starting the start eleven uh, against Georgia at the weekend offers us that. So yeah, I think I think it will be uh Howard and I think it will be uh Hendrick starting in midfield again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think Howard Hinn also adds that set piece ability to whip in balls as well. You know, his left foot is is fantastic. Uh, that brings me to uh, the defensive midfielder because I just I have a feeling we might clash on this one. Um, would you start Clem Whelan in there, think, or Josh Cullum? I think be we. My, my argument. I think we touched on the first video. There's no doubt that Whelan's extremely professional. His fitness level, I believe, is is extraordinary. He's he's very seldom injured. There's no doubt about his desire. Um, if you don't start him, I don't think he. 
I don't think he comes into the running unless we're one nil up with fifteen minutes to go and you're looking to to seal it up altogether. Mm-hmm. Um so he's put a huge amount of faith in Whelan throughout the campaign. I mean I know Whelan was looking like he was going to finish against Northern Ireland or whatever, you know, his last captain. Well Martin O'Neill yeah, basically retired him. Yeah, and he said, Listen, I'll come along and mix it now, I want you there and at the start of the campaign, um I certainly got the the vibe that he might be a bit part you know, he said if I need him for certain games but now he's seen him play and he likes what he sees and he likes what Whelan brings to the team in terms of the the stuff that fans maybe don't appreciate but that managers and players and defenders like and he's gone, no, he plays so unless he's having a, a, a change of plan where he's going to bring Josh Cullen in and maybe mm. start someone else up front, I can't see him, I can't see him, I can't see him changing that much so I would say that he, he picks Whelan. Sean. To start, but maybe not as much. Sean, who would you have in there? Would, uh, I love Whelan, definitely. 100%? Yeah. yeah. Why? Um, as my dad said, his athletical levels are big. And I think he'd be good at tracking back and tracking up yeah. the pitch. So you think he's done well yeah. throughout the campaign yeah. so far? Yes, yeah. so his dad say he likes him. So, that's, uh, so keep yeah. that uh, yeah. continuity. What about yourself, Joe? Oh. Yeah, I, I agree. I think... Um, Whelan starts. He mightn't play the full ninety minutes, but I definitely think he starts. I mean, I know uh, I mentioned in the previous video that, or sorry, I mentioned previously that every season, you know, Stoke City seems to sign a midfielder that was going to replace Glenn Whelan. It never happened. A lot of fans have been saying that change of management means the end of Glenn Whelan's career. Like Trap, he was he was picked more than any other player by Trapattoni. So when O'Neill came in, that was the end of Glenn Whelan for Ireland. It didn't happen. You know, the when Mick McCarthy took over. Yes, you say he'd been he'd been retired by Martin O'Neill, but he's he's come back. He's forced his way back into the team. He's forced his way back into starting eleven, and I think he will start against Switzerland um, in in on Tuesday night. But again, he did play ninety minutes uh, on Saturday, so he might not play the full ninety minutes on uh, uh, in uh, in Switzerland. Um, and I think. Josh Cullen, you know, he was a match against Bulgaria in, in the recent friendly, so I think we're going to see him finally make his, his competitive debut. Yeah, I personally would like to see uh, Josh Cullen start that game. It might be controversial or whatever, but uh, I just think he, he, I just think he would have the temperament and the discipline mm-hmm. to actually slot in, and I think he would do well. Um, whether me thinking that or it actually comes true, I don't. No, know. And I think your, I think your, your point there, and, it, and it's the general conversation that all Irish fans will be sitting there going. And I touched on earlier that there's a perception that the last number of Irish managers, including Mick, have been overly cautious. Yeah. And that then reflects then somehow that the manager doesn't believe in creative players or different players or younger players to to go out and express themselves. So it would be a huge call, I think, for Mick to to spring a surprise. I'd love to see him. I'd love to see him try. There's nothing. There's nothing venture like you said. This is a. This is a cup final. If it doesn't go well, we still have, we still have another chance. Yeah, so not venture, not gained. Venture, not gained. Um, do you throw a curveball at the Swiss? Does Mick sit there now looking to go right? I've got two games left. You know, this is a free shot. Away from home, this is a free shot. He he, yeah, he's pragmatic and he's dogmatic and things like that. But he's not afraid to. Mm-hmm have a go or introduce something different does he throw a curveball out and go no Whelan's out Cullen's in Connolly's in and we're gonna we're gonna go for this mm-hmm. in a real bluff you know just yeah let's have a go send that message out to the players that we are we are absolutely gonna go for this because yeah. a draw is no good for us mm-hmm. well, is he, sorry, if Connolly starts do you think he'd play the full 90 minutes I because he didn't, he didn't play the full ninety minutes against Spurs. I think he would come out late, but he, yeah, he only played I, the full I think, ninety minutes. I think the, the he said he was shattered after yeah, yeah. yeah, he said I, that. I think the Connolly thing would be very much dependent then on the score. And like I said, if you play Cullen at the start and you play Connolly, and Ireland are in a, a winning position, one nil, two one, and then we're looking to seal out the game. Glenn Whelan comes on in the sixty fifth minute and sits right in front of the the back four. So. Yeah, I think I think Mick could throw things. We spoke about the result and hand on heart and all, and all that kind of stuff. Part of me would love to see him roll the dice and 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 
try something yeah. different. Just just a curveball. Just you, you made a great point about how do we occupy the Swiss? Mm-hmm. What when we go away from home against the bigger teams who are technically probably better than us? What do we do that's going to be different? What are they expecting from us? If they watch us the other night, they're expecting a big target man to try and hold up and bring it through. That's easy, easier to defend, I would say, as opposed to going, Josh Cullen, don't know too much about him. Something different, a bit of creativity, Connolly, no fear, lots of pace, you know, McLean being a bit more advanced with a license if Stevens is behind him to go, come on, lads, we need... We need Coleman and, and McLean pushing up, getting the balls in. So it'd be a big shout. I, I still think he, he won't start. Mm. But you I, can I see would both love, sides I, of I the argument. I would love to see. I would love to see the curveball. Yeah, well, I've uh, I've ultimately been voted out by you three. You've gone with and so the the midfield three is mm. is, is as it was um, against Georgia. So then it brings me down to the front three, and I suppose we'll just pick them as a three. Um, who would you go with? I I I I'll go. Yeah. We'll go, I think it'll go the same three that started against Georgia, mm. just to just to test them out, um, see how the games petering along, and then maybe make a substitution. I do go back to you know I mentioned Wayne Rooney earlier, and and I don't mean to be using England as an example, but I think back to Michael Owen scoring that goal against Argentina, you know young hungry didn't care fearless. Conley reminds me of that. It's just not you're not afraid to go at teams. I think I think from the Conley perspective, he's the key point. And I think if Mick turns around and starts Conley on Tuesday night, I think from a fan's perspective, there'll be a certain thing to go. Do you know what? He's actually having a go here. He's 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 he knows we've two games. He's given it a shot. What's there? What's there to lose? And I think. We spoke about the, the. I think McLean definitely plays. I, I think he likes something in Robinson as well. Uh, and for me, mm. I think. So I think we'd be fairly uh, in agreement with the with the wingers. And yeah, McLean. Robinson. I actually I was going to start with McLean and Doherty on the right. I think Robinson. Like I said, he was poor against Georgia. He didn't. Uh, he didn't have the same impact. He didn't have the impact that I thought he would have. I think I think he's a good player, but I'm not sure if he's ready for international football just yet. Um, and I think Darty, well, he, he wasn't great at left full. Um, I think he deserves a chance at. Well, again, not his favorite position, but he. I know he plays like right wing back for Wolves. I think he could. We could play him in a similar role. Um, you know, in front of uh, in front of Coleman, I think his player probably, himself has probably accepted he's not going to unseat Seamus Coleman at right full. But I think he could he could slot in there on the mm. on the right wing, and um, and he he, I think they'd have a good partnership. I think away from home, you know, they both have that uh, defensive mindset. Um, discipline was, well. it, discipline was, it, yeah. was it against the Gibraltar. start against Gibraltar? Yeah, yeah. But the conditions were horrible. No, no, I know, I know. And um, the conditions were horrible and the pitch was dreadful. And I, But it didn't seem to work. And I wonder, did Mick turn around and go, we waited all up went, mm-hmm. I, I, I didn't see, given the conditions, given the pitch, given all of that, I didn't see that, maybe that, uh, I don't want to say chemistry between the two players, but did he see did he see that there? I think he likes something in Robinson. Mm, but um, is the, chemi- the chemistry any better than it was with Robinson the other night? No, no, I agreed. Again? And I think when Robinson came inside, um, I don't think Collins, maybe his movement either was, was set up for it. And I think the, the big the big starter will be will be Conley for me. I'd have McLean, Robinson, but then I'd start Conley. So your kind of argument similar to mine with Cullen? Over Whedon, it's kind of similar. Yeah, there's a, Col- there's Col- a, Collins over Col- there's a, Connolly um, over Collins, sorry. There's no doubt that the performance, and, you know, I would have been on Twitter the last day or two, been quite, I suppose, defensive of the result. Mm-hmm. Um, but you always have to look then at, at the other side of the arguments to say, well, is there an, an inherent Irish attitude where we're a bit defensive? Are we, you know, do we trust you? Do we, do we trust an attacking player? Yeah. Do we trust somebody who's going to go for it? What's the worst that could happen if he's having a stinker? You take him off after 
15, 20 minutes, the best thing that can happen is he's in the form of his life and he goes and he bangs into it that we, we think he's he's capable of. I think the fans are probably crying out for Connolly to start in as much as anything else than we're looking for new, young talent. We, we Yes, we, ex- we, we, we love the Duffies and the Whelans, but we want to see something new coming in, a new positivity. And maybe for Mick, it's a question of why not give him a shot? You know, he got 12 minutes the other night. He's played in the Premier League. He's I know played he's, against Sher. It's, I know he's young. I know he's inexperienced. No fear. Fit as a fiddle. You know, go out and make yourself an absolute an absolute hero by scoring two against Switzerland at home. So for me, what do you think? Do you think he's got a goal in him? Uh, yeah. Who would you go with, Sean, as your, as your front three uh, um, players? You like James McLean, don't you? McLean, Collins, and you like Co- he he actually liked Collins. I like Collins. Yeah. The other night, he, you know, and in and friends, he, he I'd say McGoldrick up front. Yeah, so. unfortunately, he's injured. He's out. So he's out. So we're struggling. It's either Robinson, Doherty, or or Connolly. We need your vote, John. What are you going to go for, Robinson, Doherty, or Connolly? Uh, Robertson. Mm. Robinson. So yeah. that's. You went Robinson, Robinson, didn't you? Yeah. You went Robinson. I'm kind of tempted to go Doherty um, myself. I could see both sides of the argument, and I would like to see Doherty. I think he'd be more effective. But if you could maybe, and this might sound strange, um, but Robinson's been playing fairly central for, mm. for Sheffield United, and there's an argument that he could play on the centre and maybe have Doherty on the right side of McLean, Robinson and Doherty, which, yeah. again, it's it's a lot more... I suppose energetic. It's a lot more get up the field. But Certainly with Doherty, where I think we we're all in agreement is, it'd be great to see him. I would think in a more advanced yeah. position. When I see him play on a decent work, surface, and too, a decent. Yeah. But when I see him play and he's advanced and he's attacking, he's really comfortable. He's got a goal in him, um, and if you're going to give him a shot, and again to his credit, he's been played in different positions, and it's probably his versatility is going against him slightly. Wouldn't it be great confidence booster to turn around? from McCarthy and go listen I'm going to play you in a position that I know you're comfortable in and that you like go out and show us what you do for Wolves and do it yeah do it do tonight it so do it for Ireland ok so if we if we can all kind of agree uh, ok so left left wing I think we're all in agreement that McLean plays there just for yeah. what he gives going Definitely. back as well yeah. um, and the assist for the game against Switzerland as well you've got to take that into mm. consideration too but then centre forward you're going Connolly I, Aaron I, Connolly I would love to see Connolly uh, centre forward yeah. you're going James Collins yep. you said you're going I'm going to go with Collins as well um, yeah. I think the goal against Bulgaria um, probably has earned him a, a large degree of trust from the manager um, I think there was a lot of factors went into the, the game against Georgia which might have explained his his performance um, and I think he will be given another shot against Switzerland yeah, I think as well, uh, for me, you mentioned uh, the goal. I think that, that's a huge thing psychologically. Is he's the only forward in the squad with a goal. Yeah. And at international level, that's a big thing. Mm. And as much as I would love to see Connolly play, and, and as I said in my prediction that I'd love to see him come on and score that winning goal, you know, when we go a goal down, we look at, at our best because we're going at teams and we get the equaliser and then we're pushing on. You know, against Denmark, we could have won it at the depth. Uh, against Switzerland, we were very strong, just didn't have that final goal. Maybe he's the person that gets us that final goal. And what a story that would be, him coming on, fairy tale stuff. Um, but Collins would, would have to start for me. And I think I would give him more of a pass against Georgia. Similar enough the way McGoldrick got a bit of a one against Gibraltar. Mm. I know Sean Maguire all, probably fell victim to that, but... McGoldrick then stepped up against Georgia in the game in the Aviva so he got he earned his spot that way but I think Collins he had I think what we have to do is we have to support him mm. so we need whoever's playing up to stay up with him and I know we're going to be under the cot a lot of the time like the, we were in the Aviva against the Swiss so we're going to we're going to have to work it really well but I do think we're capable of doing it if Collins can have a cup final game you know I know the, he had the playoffs for Luton there and he was effective in that, and I know it's the playoffs in League One to get into the championship. But you know he has that kind of winning feeling in these types of games mm. now. Um, 
maybe it's obviously or sorry it is a different level I understand that and I appreciate that but I do think Collins is coming through scoring goals he scored that international goal so for me Collins gets in there so he's a centre forward and then outright it's uh, I suppose Robinson gets in there but maybe a little bit unwarranted I probably would like to see Matt Doherty there I'm thinking about it now but um, I think we've, you mentioned that we've gone behind against them both the Swiss and the Danes yeah. Um, that's the only the, eight goals we've conceded the, across a, the qualifiers. A, you know, so there's a there's a fair possibility. There's a fair possibility that we could go behind, mm-hmm. and in that situation, then again, uh, does make go with as you said the the, the the safer option. If you go one down, cup final game, then you go yeah, Doherty on, Connolly on, uh, three you know three at the back and mm. and, go for and, it. and go for it. So he might be he might be seeing how it pans out yeah. if he go a goal I down. think he trusts Robinson as well and he gives him legs I think it's the legs he, genuinely it's the pace it's the it's the ability to get maybe in in behind him because uh, and he, he does have some lovely touches and he, he can cut back inside and he can link up the play mm-hmm. just it's due a goal too it's due a goal so we need and that's the goal that has to come from somewhere yeah. it'll be one goal it's yeah. just one goal we yeah. need like like McGoldrick you know when you get that one goal and you have that kind of you your you're, Broken that duck then. So I think that's the team then. It's uh, pretty much the same team that started against Georgia, isn't it? Um, except yeah. Stevens comes back in for Doherty. Other than that, it's yeah, Randolph, Coleman, Duffy, Egan, Stevens, Hendrick, uh, Howerton, Whelan, McLean, Collins, and Robinson. Funny enough, if he, he might get on, I know he said something you're talking about legs and everything like that. I also, when I see No Doubt it come on, mm-hmm. I think he quite possibly has. Something to to offer. Um, Maybe off the bench. Off the bench, no, off yeah, the bench. But then but so does Judge and, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. and Alan Brown. and yeah. There is players there that, that have that in them. But that's the team, I suppose. Uh, mm-hmm. with, a, with, a, with a bit of luck now, we, we, we may so what, get the result. What do you think, John? What's the result going to be? 1-0 uh, win to Ireland. And who's going to score? Collins. Collins. Okay, we'll take that. Yeah. Happy days, we'll if that. that's the case. Yeah. Do. Um, yeah, let us know your start 11 in the comments. Uh, huge thanks to Eddie and Sean for coming on and obviously Joe as well if you haven't already check out their Twitter accounts um, do great stuff your, the, your Instagram the, the and your Facebook because you're not on yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. so yeah check the guys out don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to like the video thanks very much for watching and we'll speak to you all soon